Hey guys, what's up? It's Will Patson here again and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm actually in Photoshop and not Illustrator because I wanted to show you guys how to texture your artwork or your hand lettering for Instagram or your portfolio. Now I've teamed up with the guys over at graphicstock.com where they basically give you unlimited downloads of stock images and there's a free trial in the description below. They are all royalty free and I use this website for some of my Instagram posts and they've got some amazing pictures in here for your basically portfolio, hand lettering, client work, whatever. You've got unlimited downloads and you can go and check them out over here. So go in the description below and click that link to get your seven day free trial. The first thing I'm going to do actually is find a picture that I want to use. Now this one here is watermarked but you can see if I, if I click on it you can see that I've got this graphics dot watermark. I'm just going to download this JPEG file and this is how easy it is. You just download it into your search bar. I'm going to get it up in my finder window and put it into my Photoshop. Now, it's pretty decent quality, this picture, actually. So, um, right now, I need to get my artwork onto this picture here. Now, if I put this into Photoshop, it's just a JPEG file, not a PSD. I need to make sure this background is editable. So, I'm going to hold Alt or Option and then double click here and then change the name to background. What that does is it makes that layer editable. It's no longer an actual PSD background layer. So there we go. We've made it easier. The second thing I want to do is actually bring in my hand lettering. Now there's a few ways of doing this. I could either go into my finder options over here and then find the file like my .ai file from Illustrator and bring it in. Or I could bring in another PSD with my Illustrator file in. Or I could copy it in from Illustrator. Or the best and the most easiest way of doing it is going over to your libraries over here. Making sure you have your document in libraries. And just drag it over like so. And this is like the easiest way of getting your Illustrator files in. I'm just going to scale this down a little bit whilst it's in free transform mode. And I'm just going to place it in my screen. Double click to say yes, we're all good. And then I'm going to go to the artwork over here. It's called Artwork 68. I'm just going to call it a Willing Mind, like so. And then I'm going to right click, go to Blending Options. Now, the first thing I want to do is I obviously want to change the color to white because this would look cool in black, but I think it looks better in a white color. So I'm going to go to Color Overlay over here. And then I'm going to make sure my color while clicking on this swatch is EF, EF, EF in the hex code part down here. Now in the color picker, this hex code is actually a reference to this specific color. So there is many hex codes. If I was to go over here, you'd see there'd be like this hex code 861A1A. Now that's the hex code for this specific color. We're going to stick with the first one, which is EF, 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 and it's just slight gray. So it's a very light gray, a very, very light gray, but it looks better than just white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to blending options again by right clicking on the layer, blending options. And then the first part that comes out is the actual blending options. Now here is what we want. We want blend if. Now the way to understand this is that we need to sort of blend this into the background. And there's a couple ways of doing this and some of them aren't as good as the others. I'll show you. So I'm going to cancel out of there and I've got my color overlay on right now. So that's the effect put on there. What I could do to this layer is I could overlay it and it might not very, work very well uh, because I've rast I haven't rasterized my layer. And that means that I have to rasterize it before the color overlay will work. So what we need to do is actually go into blend options go into this blend if panel this blend if panel is more like a formula it's saying blend this layer the willing minds layer to the background layer which is the layer underneath the underlining layer if it exceeds a certain amount of gray now that is an amazing tool but if i use it if i just drag this by you can see it's all choppy and that does not look good you can see where it could look good but at the minute, that doesn't look great. It looks like someone's literally just like changed the levels on it to make it look a bit weird. I mean, we could make it look okay, depending on what style you want, but there is such an easier and better way. The easier way and the better way is by holding Option or Alt and then dragging this quarter bit out here. Now, everything is different now because I've just dragged this out. When I drag this out, you can see that it's actually blending the background into the Willing Mind type. Now, this is really effective because now it looks like it is literally been drawn on the wall. There's a few other effects we can do now. 
All this is is a blending option. And over here, you can see I've got this square panel over here. And it means it, it's saying there indicates layer has advanced blending options. And that's because that's what it is. Blending options that I've taken this part out. Now, if you didn't see what I did, I'll bring it back and show you. So if I move this by itself with the mouse, it's going to go all together. We want to split this arrow in half by holding Alt or Option and dragging this. And that will mean a smoother transition into there. And now it looks like it's on the wall. What we can now do is actually create an effect called rippling. And rippling means that it's going to ripple the edges so it doesn't look so clean. The problem is if you want it to look really natural or hand-drawn, we have to make it look imperfect. So I'm going to make sure my layer is highlighted or selected. Go up to filter and we're going to try and find ripple if I can find it. Okay, so filter, distort, ripple. There we go. It's going to bring this little document up here. Now you can see the preview of the corners here. I'm going to ripple it a bit less over to this way. Just so it looks a bit imperfect. Now you might not see much of a change just now, but if I zoom in, you can see there's a tiny, tiny change on the corners. It just looks like a bit less perfect because it's an illustrator file. What we can do now is we can change the levels add some color to it if we wanted to by going to our adjustment layers down here we can change the brightness and the contrast so we could auto it see what it does and then we can adjust it from there it really just depends what your taste is in everything that you're doing now this added more contrast than anything which i don't really want but for instagram this is a great way of making sure your type looks amazing and looks like it's been hand drawn onto a wall or a piece of paper. You can use this for the whites, you can use it for the blacks as in like the white sections as well, it can be the opposite way. But you can see how effective this can be within your portfolio piece. Thank you so much for watching the tutorial guys. If you want your seven day free trial over at graphicstock.com for your royalty free images, go ahead and click in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.